Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I got a super easy lasagna dish. You can do it about 45 minutes in your Dutch oven, so stay tuned. So the lasagna we're going to make today, if you guys have been following me recently, you know we're on a low carb or limited carb diet. I wouldn't say it's no carb. It's just uh, we try to cut it wherever we can. Man, the smoke is coming up under here bad today. I don't know if y'all guys can see that. But anyway, we got some charcoal going over on our Lodge Dutch oven table right now. I've got my Lodge 10-inch Dutch oven uh, sitting here ready to go. And I'm going to show you how we're going to make a delicious lasagna with no pasta. So first thing you're going to need for your lasagna is some ground chuck. This is fresh ground I know because I ground it uh, with this whole coronavirus thing. Uh, stores was wiped out of hamburger. I was going to do this with ground turkey for you. Uh, wiped out of that too. So we just bought chuck. They had plenty of that. Ran it through the grinder twice on the fine plate. Uh, pretty awesome. Already had some of that. Uh, we got a uh, a medium onion. This is sweet onion by Vadeya, uh, diced up. I've got, that's the first two things we're going to cook. But let me show you everything else we're going to need. I got some fire roasted Barilla marinara. Use whatever kind you want or make your own. Uh, if you know how to make good marinara, definitely make it. I have some some deli chicken breast. And if you can see, that's I've had it cut about as thick as bologna. We'll see what we'll do with that in a little bit. I got some mushrooms just because I like them. You not necessarily have to have them. And of course, you need uh, ricotta cheese. So I got some uh, part skim milk ricotta. Uh, I don't know how that's going to be. A little bit of olive oil just to oil our oven with. I got some our Parmigiana Reggiana right there. A little bit of that left, and some mozzarella to use at the end. And uh, that's it. All right. So let's go ahead and get a Dutch oven ready. So I mentioned about this coronavirus thing, you know, we're all, uh, everybody's sheltering in place. And so everybody's uptight, everybody's, you know, close quarters at home. You know, we have company stay in here actually, so three extra people, uh, including one little toddler um, at home here. And so I'm cooking for more people. So I'm going to make a little bit bigger dish. Normally I would scale this down. If it was just me and Mrs. Backwoods there, I would scale it down for the little eight inch uh are we th this one is actually a camp made um i'm actually going to get another one from lodge and do a review on it but um you can scale this up you can scale it down i did the test for this dish in a cast iron skillet in the oven and it turned out awesome okay but with everybody being all uptight and worried about all this kind of coronavirus mess what better to make than comfort food and i can't think of any one of my favorite comfort foods is lasagna and like I said it's great great left over uh, and most of you guys have know that already so that's what we've never done it on the channel yet um, so today we're going to modify that recipe um, I got this recipe off of YouTube and then I modified it a bit okay so try to make it mine uh, we are going to one of the ingredients I didn't um, tell you about was uh gonna put some fresh basil in it okay and the barking you hear in the background is our new little pup cabela and she's barking at the chicken yeah through the screen she's inside the screen and chicken's outside i'll show you a clip at the puppy bomb so wait for that one Puppy bomb time, you gotta say hi to folks on YouTube. Come on. You gotta say hi on hi to everybody on YouTube. So our coals are getting about ready. I like to pour them out in a line. And I started quite a few. So we want to try to do this dish in 45 minutes or so. So we're gonna need some heat to do that. This line, don't tell you what, them suckers are hot. 
this line method is going to kind of scatter them and that's going to give us multiple places to put our oven to keep it hot all right let's go ahead and put our number 10 on i already put a little bit of oil on the bottom of that and uh we'll let that start getting hot That gave that a couple minutes, start coming up the heat. Just gonna go ahead and up. That's only gonna be about a half a pound ground chuck for this size dish. And you can see I did get a nice wooden spatula. But use metal if you want. I've been using metal in these ovens since I had them. Started this channel 10 years ago. And um, you can see those ovens look just as good as anyone else is ever. Use metal tools as long as you take care of uh, how much pressure you're putting on that finish. So we're going to go ahead and just start browning that off. And get it pretty nice and chopped up, you know. Let it be pretty loose. And if you wanted, you could, you know, if you're grinding your own, you could do it just once, once through the flying plate, and it'll be that's this step will be easier. So as the oil starts coming up on that, go ahead and throw in all my onions, mix them in together, so they're cooking the oil from the ground chuck. And uh, I know everyone has a famous lasagna recipe, and it's it's as about as different from one to the next to the next as you know for every single one of them. So don't leave a comment saying that's not how you make lasagna. What we're making is not lasagna. Okay, lasagna refers to the noodle. We're not putting a noodle in, but it's going to be lasagna like. And believe me, it tastes as good or better than lasagna. All right. So yeah, don't don't uh, don't hit the thumbs down button because we're not making a uh, traditional um, lasagna dish. Okay. So that's gonna let them onions soften up, and then we're gonna drain off the excess um, grease from the burger. And we'll get started. So that looks pretty good, smelling awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off, set it aside, let it cool down just a second so I can handle it. I have a, uh, a sieve and um, if you don't know this with your Dutch ovens already you got one leg there that you can tip it with that lines up usually I got a sieve over a, a stainless steel bowl and I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna have to loosen that up a bit I'll grab my spatch uh, I'm stepping on dog toys get that all loosened up Hopefully we can get it out of there without burning our hands off. Alrighty. I'll just let that drain. And then we're not even going to clean the pot. So uh, we took the meat out. The oven's cooled down a little bit. We're going to start right in the bottom. You see about how the thickness of this is. Okay. Uh, that was actually a little, little thick. But we're going to go ahead and arrange that in a layer in the bottom. I think it's going to take a. We're going to only go three pieces per instead of trying to overlap them. All right. Now I'm going to go right on top of that with some sauce. This is the fire roasted Barilla, and it's pretty damn good, I tell you that. And I really would have liked to have had a full layer of chicken on the bottom of this to protect the bottom from the sauce. May eat a little bit of my seasoning, but with that 
amount of oil in there is probably going to be just fine. Alright, so decent layer of that. As much as you want. If you like yours really saucy, put more. Alright, I'm going to go in uh, on top of that. I told you we were going to do a little, a little uh, basil in there. So we're just going to scatter some leaves. So you get at least one little leaf or so in each bite. We got plenty more if we need them. Alright, and we're coming. Alright, let's go. Let's go ricotta cheese this time. Alright, and now this is the hard part is trying to just spread this out and it's cold too. And you know, this is camp cooking, so it ain't got to be, uh, you know, perfect as far as your spread and all that goes. You just want to get it in there. Okie dokie. Now, now we need some meat. That's had a chance to drain now. Let's go ahead and put about a third of what we have of our meat and onions in there. Give that a good scatter. Trying to get it out to the edges. All right, and then this layer, this first layer, I'm gonna go ahead and put me a layer of mushrooms in there. These are sliced pretty thin. These are baby bellas or porcinis. They got a lot more flavor than a, a white mushroom. But again, if you don't like an ingredient, that's not what the dislike button's for. Okay, guys. Some of you guys will hit dislike just because you know you don't like mushrooms or some other thing we put in there. Oh, I was with you until you put that in there. And they hit the dislike button. Dislike button it should be is if you just didn't like the content or the way it was put together or the presentation or any of that. Not just because you didn't like the recipe. Okay. All right. So that's our first layer. We're complete on that one. I'm gonna go in with another layer of chicken. Just like that, get in there as tight as you can. Alrighty. Now, you can do your layers any way you'd like. Um, this is the way I'm doing it, so I go in more sauce. It might be easier to put the cheese on top of the chicken first, but leave your comment if you think that I should have put the cheese on top of the chicken first. We got some goodies too to go on top. Let's get more basil leaves. I mean, nice and basil-y. I don't want it to be too overly basil, so we're only going to do that on this these first two layers. All right, more ricotta. Might have been easier if I warmed this up a little bit. It might have been a little bit more spreadable, but. If you're out of camp, yours is probably going to be warmer than mine. Mozzarella, your yeah, baby. The last one I made to test this dish I, dish, I actually put some pepperonis on it too. So we're gonna let that get going. And remember, we had the Parmigiano Reggiano. We're gonna save that for the for the garnish. Okay. So all of our ingredients are in. If we got one more basil leaf, but if we put them on there, it'll just burn. So we'll save them for garnish too. Okay. Now we're gonna get the lid on this rascal. And we're gonna set it up for 350 and it's gonna go for about 30 minutes. So just because my coals are burnt down, I'm gonna stay with it. I do this all the time. I'm going 10 on the bottom right now.
I always judge it. You know, these coals are going to be burned down by the time we get to this point since we use the same batch of coals. But what I've learned over the years is you can maintain that 350 if you just keep them buttered up. Now I know the count is going to be higher because the coals are smaller. But if you make that solid rain and keep it all to the outside, you're still going to stay right around 350 degrees. That's my little tip for the day. And uh, you probably heard me do that several times. But if you're, this is the first time you're watching our channel and you're getting into Dutch oven cooking, that's how you deal with your coals now are half the size or a third of the size they were when we started. So just don't worry about the coal count method because if you do still count the coals, you won't get nowhere near the temperature you're aiming for. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at it. And I, I came and looked at it before and I said it didn't have quite enough mozzarella on so I added more mozzarella. I think that was a good move. And what I've done now after about 15 minutes is these coals are really burning down. I'm moving some more that I had to the side. You guys are probably wondering why I had so many coals going. All right, because if we were using Kingsford and it burns down fast. So I put another small ring of coals here and I'm gonna keep my eye on it because it still needs about another 10 to 15 minutes. All right, guys, it's been the allotted little over 30 minutes, actually about 40. This uh, charcoal is just burning right down. So that's getting a nice brown top on it now. And you see the bubbles are browning. Looks perfect. We're gonna be taking it off. So now like with uh, every other lasagna, needs a while to cool so that everything can get nice and set before we try to take it out. So today we're going to go ahead and serve this up for you backwards gourmet style. You know that first piece you're going to get out of there is going to be the hardest one. and. Um, it's going to be always the same here in the Dutch oven. We have our metal tool. So I'm going to bring that over. Serve it up for you right there on a long plate. Just like that. God, that looks good. Alright. Um, what I'm going to do now is going to drizzle a plate with just a little extra virgin olive oil. Bring in a little bit of basil over here. Then I've uh, steamed some cauliflower in fairly big chunks. Go ahead and put one chunk of cauliflower right there. Then we got our parmig Parmigiano Reggiano. Let's uh, flip that one over. It looks a little prettier. Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, great some Parmesan Reggiano all over the plate and right on our cauliflower just like so there you go that's some backwards gourmet low carb lasagna in the Dutch oven Let's go ahead and give it a try. Mmm. Really hot. Mmm. Wow. So if you didn't know any better, you think this is just regular lasagna. I mean, it tastes just like regular lasagna, but has lower carbs. 
Um, you want to buy that? I know you do. Mm. We did some cauliflower on the side there. Mm. I drizzled that with a little extra virgin olive oil and Seminole Swamp Season and Parmesan Reggiano. Got to tell you that. Obviously, you got to have some Parmesan Reggiano over top. So, it's a really, really great dish. Uh, you can do anywhere camping, at home, in the backyard like we did it. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel. You can do it right here for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right up here. And for a whole playlist cast iron Dutch oven cooking, go me right up there. We'll see you next time.